stay tuned because for the next 60 minutes, Motorsports Unlimited is on the air. Hi, I'm Jerry Bryant, and these are the lovely ladies of Motorsports. And all this hour, we're going to have 60 minutes of action-packed excitement. All kinds of exciting things will happen. And we got the famous Bill Wilt, and we got all kinds of other good stuff that's happening all this hour. Motorsports Unlimited, 60 minutes of non-stop action. So let's go to the studio right now, huh? Welcome folks, I'm Patty Borowitz and I'm here to tell you a bit about what is going on. Motorsports Unlimited is an American cable access television show that has been around since 1986. In that time we have filmed well over 1,300 episodes. These test episodes are snippets of shows from our vault. We sure hope that you enjoy them. In today's day and age of computers, YouTube and the internet, we are taking advantage of it and bringing Motorsports Unlimited global. Subscribe to our YouTube channel under Bill Wilt, because over the next few weeks we are going to have our full 60-minute episodes broadcasting. Be sure to tell all of your friends and join us on YouTube under Bill Wilt. Let's get started. I'm sorry, I could not resist it. I like the Elvis opening show so much that we had to do it once more because I got these really cool sunglasses, right Chris? Yeah, but it really did look neat, the, the idea you had there, picking up all the girls like that. It really was a great idea. Okay, but where are we today? We're in, this is obviously not the uh, Elvis uh, show at the Oak Brook Terrace. No, we're back at uh, ABC Auto Parts. Right, this is our old friends at ABC Auto Parts, and what are you supposed to be doing here, Allison? We are going to come here and learn how an engine works. No! Uh, no can we we tell do this one hour TV show. <laughs> I'm not sure what we're going to learn today. Laura, tell them. Um, I don't know. I suppose that we're going to show what sort of good stuff you can get at a junkyard. <laughs> Honestly, I explained it to them all the way down here. No, remember I tested you guys during the past couple of weeks. I've been testing you on cars, on the badges that we see on cars and all that, and okay. asking you if it means anything, if these things... Say again? Nomenclature. Okay, college grad. Now, uh, we've, been asking, we've been asking if they mean anything to you, and you guys are not alone, by the way. Most guys also don't know what that means. For example, OHC. Laura, what does OHC mean to you if you see that on a car? I really don't know. Okay, uh, how about SOHC? I don't know. Okay, uh, how about DOHC? The more offers. <laughs> I'm wrong. Okay. Well, I know what that no, no, Well, I know, but that's why I didn't ask you, Chris, because I didn't want to spoil the surprise. <laughs> Anyhow, so I decided, I said, now where can we get a demonstration of these things? And our old friends at ABC Auto Parts, these guys are always willing to, I mean, you just wouldn't believe the trouble they went through again. Remember, Chris, last year when they actually took the front wheel drive car apart so we could demonstrate to our audience? Remember? It very, very, they go through an awful lot of work. Right. Uh, and so we are here today to explain what all those things mean, because remember now, the purchase of an automobile is probably, if it's not the largest purchase you'll ever make in your life, it'll probably be your second largest purchase after a home. This is very important, and a knowledgeable consumer is really our best friend. So we want to explain what some of these things mean and demonstrate the parts and pieces that go into it, because it's very, very important. Now, what I want to do is, is I want to start with this car right over here, and we're going to ask you what this means. Chris? I don't know what it means. Allison? Uh, I have an idea, but I won't say because it's dirty. No, it's definitely not dirty. Kimmy, go ahead and tell her what it means. I don't, I'm not sure. Laura? I don't know. Okay, girls, come on over here so we can get a little better camera shot of you guys. Right here, line up in a line. Okay, what we have just looked at now is a badge, a typical identification badge on a car that the factory went through an awful lot of work and effort to make sure that you knew this, that this was OHC fuel injection. Now, Christine, you must know what fuel injection means. Yes, it's a uh, replacement for a carburetor. 
Well, replacement, it's, a, it's, a, it's an entirely different way of inducting fuel into the airstream. Right. And I don't want to get into all that because that's not my point. I'm most interested today in the OHC. That is fairly common. Now, Can, I ask a wait a minute? Question? Can I ask a question before you go on? How much longer do we have to look at you in those glasses? Oh, come on. These glasses are... <laughs> Kimmy, didn't you say the glasses were very cool? Oh, you look so cool, Bill. Cool, man. Cool. <laughs> Okay, Joe I'll cool. take them off. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's hard to take you serious with the glasses. Okay. In any event, uh, OHC means something, and it's important. And the the manufacturers go through a lot of effort to redesign these engines and redesign these parts so that the public gets a superior product. But it's really of no value if nobody knows what it means. Well, I was telling you when I when you look at a car, I'll look at that but I add it like for the decor, like if it's a neat color or the neat numbers. You look at it for decorative value as far as the how the letters are and or how you know, the color if they're in gold, you know, you notice it that way. But truthfully, how many of the do the public most of them know that? I mean I would well, not have. Let's talk about it because that's exactly why I'm doing this program today. And girls, I think we better spread out a little because I don't think the camera's getting you guys at all. Uh in a line now, okay? Now, here's the problem. One cannot criticize the automakers for not making technically excellent products if, when they introduce technically excellent products into the marketplace, the public has no interest in them and doesn't reward them with purchases. For example, suppose manufacturer A brought out a car that had a flathead engine, n nothing technically sophisticated, I won't go into what all that means, but a, a very a primitive car technically sold it for say five thousand dollars a piece whatever another manufacturer for the same price brought up brought out a car with double overhead cams and electronic fuel injection and a very sophisticated piece five thousand dollars and they sell they both sold an equal amount of them well that doesn't reward the technical excellence of manufacturer b that went through all the effort to make a technically advanced product if it wasn't rewarded in the marketplace and that's what's wrong what i'm trying to do is help people understand what these things are but basically by making it technically advanced don't they also in their marketing make them look spiffy or the colors or the brightness to sell to the people who don't know what that means right you're 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 you're, you're right and wrong here's the problem with it yes you're right the marketing department will take this stuff and run with it unfortunately they also take stuff that doesn't mean anything and run with it and it confuses the public <laughs> right. for example the yeah. the OHC that's important now why is it if it were OHV would that mean anything to you about the same as OHC, actually. <laughs> okay, and yet OHC would be technically more sophisticated than OHV, but if you didn't know that, whether it was, maybe the OHV was a spiffier design, and you selected that one because it had right. a spiffier badge than the OHC, even though the OHC, they spent a lot of time. Does that, you see what I'm getting at? Yes, I do, but now, when you go for a car, like I'll ask, when I was just went for my new car, I was asking questions like, all right, tell me about the car. They never mentioned that. They're telling me, which was, I felt a little insulted. Oh, the window goes, if you press the button, it go all down by itself. You don't have to hold the button down. And the radio has a cassette deck in it. And I almost found it kind of insulting. Well, don't be no, insulted because they don't know either. Generally, the salesman say, doesn't know. I was going to say, they probably have no idea what it means either. Okay, we are going to specifically start with one thing in particular today, and that is this business of... OHV, OHC, uh, DOHC, SOHC, and what this means as far as components are concerned. And I'm going to hope that we don't get stung by these bees flying around. I know, they're aggravated. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's get into it. In fact, I'll tell you what, I'd like to look at a couple of more badges first, and then we will get into the specific business of this OHC and everything so you guys understand that this really does mean something and it's important. So if we could, all four of you guys together. Don't go away, folks. We'll be right back. I must admit, I've never paid much attention to the technical information badges on cars. Perhaps there is something to be learned. Let's watch. Okay, Kimmy, what does it say? It says 2.8 multi-port FI. What does that mean? I don't know. You really don't have any idea? I have no idea. Okay, yet those things are very important. First of all, the 2.8, that's a little bit Madison avenue -y. And what do I mean by that? That means like advertising agency stuff. Okay. 2.8 means 2.8 liters. There's about 61 cubic inches in a liter. So if you took two 61 cubic inch and 61 cubic inch, add that together, and then add 0.8 of another liter, that'll give you the, <laughs> in cubic inches. It's just another way of saying engine size, like okay. a 427 is 427 cubic inches. This is 2.8 liters, but it's so many cubic inches. Uh, 
the word FI. I think that's fuel injection. That's exactly correct. That's fuel injection. But the word multi-port fuel injection, what does that mean? That's what the multi, the multi-port, that, it's significant. What does it mean? Uh, gee, I'm not sure. Okay. Fuel injectors that are not sophisticated generally will have a common fuel injection nozzle spraying into like a plenum chamber and all of the cylinders drawing from that one chamber. Whereas okay. the more sophisticated ones, they'll have multi-port fuel injection, whereas each port for each cylinder has a fuel injector nozzle. It's a little bit more sophisticated than the other one, and yet you probably wouldn't have paid any more for one with multi-port fuel injection for one than with the, what they call throttle body fuel injection, right? Right. Okay, but if you know, then it becomes of value. Okay, now let's take a look at something else and tell the camera. Don't go away folks, we'll be right back. Okay, that explains 2.8 multi-port FI. But how about the word turbo, which seems to be everywhere? Alright, Laura, it's your turn. What does it say? Okay. What does it say where? Ah, over here. See, you didn't know that the camera just saw this. Right there. What does it say? Turbo electronic fuel injection. Okay, step back now. What does it mean? Um, well, it would be different than normal fuel injection, but um, that's about all I know. <laughs> so you think the word turbo would be part of the fuel injection? Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, it's not. First of all, turbo is the most overused word in the English language. I don't want to go into it all now. We've talked about it on other programs, and what they are essentially talking about is that this engine is turbocharged. Mm -hmm. And turbocharged means an engine has a compressor on the intake side. We've been okay. through it before. I don't want to get into that because they turbo everything. Now, they have turbo car washes, turbo this, turbo <laughs> shoes, tur <laughs> turbo records. It's the most overused words. So it really means nothing it, then? It, well, oh no, it's very important, mm -hmm. but it means that the car is supercharged. And oh, okay. more importantly than that, the better word is what the Germans call it, is the car has a compressor on it, because that's what a supercharger is, it's a compressor. Oh. This happens to be an exhaust-driven compressor. Mm -hmm. The other word, electronic fuel injection, what does that mean? Electronic fuel injection. Um, would it mean that the car had sort of a computer inside of it that controls the fuel injection? Well, essentially what it means is, yes, it does. Electronic fuel injection is controlled by a computer and all that. Mm -hmm. It's true. But essentially what it is telling you there is that it has a fuel injection rather than a carburetor, and mm -hmm. it's electronic fuel injection rather than a mechanical fuel injection. Is okay. that clear? Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. Kimmy, do you have a question on that? I was just wondering on what was the difference between the electronic fuel injection compared to the regular fuel is injection. The electronic is the more advanced. Yeah, that's correct. The problem with going with mechanical fuel injection is mechanical fuel injection has been used for years and years and years in race, tra in race cars. But race cars have to, they operate under very limited conditions. What they really need is full throttle, at, the, at least, at the very least, three-quarter throttle. So they're operating three-quarter to full throttle all the time. Uh, that's all that the computer has to, I mean, that's all the injection has to do is spray fuel in at that rate. Whereas when you get into automobiles, you're going to be caught in hot traffic, idling, the air conditioner kicks on, you're oh, going to be in freezing wow. cold temperatures. It's so very difficult. And electronic fuel injection is much more sophisticated in that the computer senses a variety of conditions other than just engine need uh, and meters fuel accordingly. Really, electronic fuel injection is what made, has made fuel injection applicable to passenger car use. Fair enough. We've got to go on to the next one. Everybody together? Don't go away, folks. We'll be right back. Of course, you have to see the show in its entirety to get the explanation and see the components of overhead valves, overhead cams, double overhead cams, and much more. This and our other YouTube tests are just snippets of how we do things on Motorsports Unlimited. We think you'll find Motorsports Unlimited a unique and enjoyable way to raise public consciousness, understanding, and appreciation of the motorsport community and their activities. And we hope you'll look for us on the Bill Wilt YouTube channel. <laughs>